Hello. Well, and uh, once again, welcome to Boss Boxing Predictions, Volume 68. Uh, first of all, how do I predict fights when I don't really know much or anything about the fighters involved? Well, naturally I go to box rack where I look at their records what is really most important to see uh, to look at is that their last fight or last few fights anyway and also their age and uh, you know just their their whole history well the first fight such fight that I am going to cover is one between Mercito Gesta and Robert Manzanares Manzanares uh, yeah it's actually on Thursday the weekend WBO any NABU lightweight title. <coughs> well, guess that he was a solid uh, contender, has been for some time. He's only got two losses, and both are to top fighters. First, he lost to Miguel Vasquez in 2012 on points, and then uh, uh, this year, actually, in January, he lost to Jorge Linares on points so he is not uh, you know elite level fighter but uh, I guess he's just below that his best vic victory was I guess against Martin Honorio when he knocked out Honorio in eight rounds and his opponent Manzanares he's a uh, only got one defeat and it was a uh, hang on it was oh yeah here 2012 TKO in 6th round against Alejandro Barrera so uh, he's a puncher this guy Manzanares 29 knockouts in 36 victories and guess that he's a uh, yeah, I he can punch, but he's not really a, a knockout artist. He's got only 17 KOs and 31 wins. So, but uh, of course, Gesta has the experience on his side, and uh, his record suggests that he he is the most likely one to win. So. Uh, all guys that uh, Manzanares has so far fought were either, you know, washed up former contenders or just, you know, nobodies. So, of course, Gesta is the favorite, even though he is seven years older than uh, Manzanares. <coughs> so, anyway, I think. Yes, that will most likely win on points. This is a 10 round fight, so yeah. That was it. And now, there's also a fight between Joe Joyce and, and Richard Larte. It's for the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Heavyweight title. Yeah, on Friday. Joe Joyce has only got four fights so far, but uh, he's been rather impressive. And he won all by KO, so he's a very big guy, six foot six. It's called the Juggernaut. But he started uh, as a pro late. Late, he's already 32, so you know, he can't have that long career, but I guess he doesn't want perhaps either. 
Anyway, uh, Larte is. Uh, doesn't say how old he is, but <coughs> he's also big, six foot five. But uh, he looks smaller, you know, build wise than uh, Joyce, who is really a huge guy. But he's also rather athletic too. And uh, Larte was stopped already once by Ergun Mersin. Uh, who is not perhaps, who hasn't fought since anyway, the guy that stopped him. So I think uh, Joyce will win this one also by KO or TKO in the 4th, 5th, 6th round maybe, I don't know. Uh, yeah, it de depends how, you know, how much he wants to impress, I guess he does have to impress, yeah. So Joe Joyce to win by a KO within the first six rounds is my prediction. And then, let's go on. Yeah, hmm. Even Fira Tarfon is still fighting, that's really... <laughs> he should just quit and retire. He's too old. Well, trying to find the next good fight or decent... Well, yeah. There is the Gavin McDonald versus Stuart Hall. It's for WBC International Super Bantamweight title. Well, Gavin McDonald is the favorite, of course, and uh, he's the technician. He's got only one loss to Ray Vargas last year by majority decision. Stuart Hall is a, a, a veteran and, uh, you know, he has six losses. He hasn't been stopped, so he's just, uh, you know, a decent fighter but uh, and tough you know and he really brings it on but uh, he's just not good enough I mean to beat the, the top guys he beat Rodrigo Guerrero in 2016 on points that is that's his best and biggest victory but McDonald is just you know Actually, Hall is kind of fighting at home because he's from Darlington, D County Durham, and this fight is in Newcastle. While McDonnell is uh, from Doncaster. Well, that's not too far off either. <laughs> anyway, McDonnell is the clear favorite here, and he will win, I believe, on points. Yeah. Ricky Burns also back, but his his opponent is not announced. So yeah, <coughs> there are some still some good fights to go. You know what? I'm just gonna go skip this and go to the main page. Page, <laughs> yeah. Javier Fortuna is fighting against Adrian or Adrian Granados. This is a good fight. I like this fight, and uh, that means that Fortuna is now uh, fighting at welterweight. I I think because Granados is a welterweight or. Uh, super lightweight maybe no well, fortuna he was many thought that he was robbed in his last fight in january against robert easter jr it was very close yeah very anyway he's still a very capable fighter and he's a boxer puncher so I was rather shocked when he lost to Jason Sosa, you know, because uh, Sosa has since been exposed ra as rather one-dimensional 
have season. He's a, he's a puncher, I guess. But he was also beaten by Gamboa in his last fight, actually. Anyway, uh, Granados is a tough, tough customer and really definitely a solid fighter who gave uh, some guys like Broner and uh, Sean Porter Porter tough fights, especially Broner and he beat also sensationally Amir Imam, he stopped him of course so uh, this fight is going to be a, you know good I believe rather competitive but Fortuna should you know triumph even though he's fighting a bigger man he's a former former featherweight for two of course and he was super featherweight uh, lightweight and now I don't know if this is a super lightweight or welterweight fight doesn't really matter I think it's a super lightweight most most likely <coughs> but uh, you know Granados yeah he has never been stopped so I don't think Fortuna can do it either because He's fighting at a higher weight now, but who knows? Anyway, yeah, Fortuna will win, I think, on points. And uh, yeah, then the final fight, I guess, is uh, that I want to say something about is between Errol Spence Jr. and Carlos Ocampo. Errol Spence is making his second defense uh, of the IBF title welterweight against this rather unknown guy from Mexico called Carlos Ocampo. Well, huh. Ocampo, his 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 record is rather, you know, let's say anonymous his biggest names name uh, is Jorge Paez Jr. who was never really that good a fighter so I guess I, I'm not really I guess he is just uh, you know kind of uh, easy fight for Spence uh, kind of uh, rest from <laughs> from bigger fights, you know, just one of those uh, mandatories that are just there, you know, because <laughs> he's undefeated and, you know, young and all that. And uh, so I, Ocampo is 22 and over 13 KO, so I guess he's got some power, but he's not a really big puncher, it seems. While Spence is 23 and all with 20 KOs, of course, he is, he is the puncher and the better boxer. So I think this will not go the distance either, as with Spence's uh, last uh, one, two, uh, 10 fights. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know, Mexicans are known as very tough fighters, but uh, I think this will not last that long, really. Five rounds, perhaps. Something like that. Six, seven at, at, at the most, I, I'd say. But uh, let's say five, okay? I, I have a feeling that it will happen in the fifth round. So, yeah. <coughs> Spence to win by a KO or TKO in five rounds. Yeah, if he could do it to Al Algeria, why not to this guy? <laughs> it may even end sooner. I don't know. Perhaps, but uh, let, I, I'm gonna go with five, the fifth round. <laughs> yes. So that was it for this time. <clears throat> There weren't as many really exciting fights as last week, but anyway, there are a few. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed those fights and uh, 
Until the next time, see you. Bye-bye.